okay but in dynamic simulation you are going to uh, do real plant simulation so you have defined and specify detailed equipment specification in the dynamic simulation uh, then you can verify that the equipment uh, function as expected in an actual plant situation the the main advantage of the dynamics that if you are going if, if I have a plant that that's already running okay and I need to uh, see what the impact of changing maybe the feed flow rate or changing the the the, uh, the control strategy itself uh, if I need to uh, change the control strategy I need to change any variable and I, I want to see the impact uh, uh, maybe on the uh, uh, taking uh, into consideration the, the disturbances that might affect the other uh, process parameter. So I cannot do it online. What the meaning of online? I cannot do it while running the plant. Okay, so I have to take a copy or I, I, I have to make a simulation of my case on uh, HiSys and uh, defining all the control strategies that I have and see uh, how, how it, it will affect the plant performance. For example, if I'm if you have, uh, for example, a, a, a feedback control loop, and you need to uh, study the impact of uh, changing the control loop from feedback to cascade, okay? So uh, I need to verify that maybe the, the cascade is better, or uh, I should keep the feedback control loop, or uh, try another control loop. So in order to design and test a variety of control strategies before choosing one, so I have to simulate it in dynamics mode and see which one is will give better uh, results and give a better response so i can install i can see which control strategy will give me uh, the better action or better response uh, for this uh, process variable you can also examine the dynamic response uh, to the system disturbance and optimize the tuning of controllers you know if you are running in, a, in a, if you are already uh, working in a plant so you, you know that uh, for each controller I have a tuning parameters okay for example BID controllers I have P and I and D uh, or uh, KC, TI, TD these parameters that affect the uh, response of the controller uh, uh, on the disturbance whenever the disturbance happened uh, the, the tuning parameter will affect the how fast or uh, uh, slow the uh, the response of the controller is. Okay, so the changing the uh, or tuning the controller parameter will affect the response. So you can test several tuning uh, values and see what the impact on the dynamic simulation before uh, testing it actually on the plant. Okay, so dynamic analysis provides feedback. a plant that have difficulty uh, achieving the steady state objective. In general, dynamic simulation is an extension of a steady state process simulation where time dependence is built into the model via derivative term or we can see accumulation of mass and energy balance. In steady state, the, the, the conditions will not change. It will remain the uh, uh, the same all the time which is not the uh, the case in the real simulation or the real plant operation you have disturbances so you have to simulate these disturbances and, and to see what the uh, how it will affect the process parameters so in dynamic simulation you can uh, even do scenarios for uh, uh, disturbances that might happen during the actual operation and see the response of the controllers uh, uh, so uh, then you can optimize your control strategy, change the tuning of the controllers, okay? Or you can eliminate the controller and uh, maybe change it or uh, put it on another uh, process variable that uh, might enhance your process. You know, every every plant may be uh, suffer, uh, suffering from uh, uh, maybe... Uh, difficulties in some areas or in some uh, process variables so you can you have to you can handle it through dynamic simulation okay so in general dynamic simulation uh, 
will uh, consider the time in the case you can you can see the effect of uh, uh, disturbance uh, maybe for one day one year you can see uh, what the actual performance during this uh, period okay you can run the simulation uh, for uh, whatever the yeah, how long uh, the, the time you want okay with acceleration of course and see uh, uh, what the results will be during this uh, interval okay uh, also you can uh, if I have yeah, if, if I can say okay I have a procedure for a startup let's let's take an example I now I am I'm uh, uh, I am in a new plant that's uh, maybe I'm going now to start up this plant okay and I have the uh, procedure or the manual that says uh, okay in order to uh, start up the plant you have to uh, there is a sequence of uh, actions that you have to do in order to properly start up the plant the plant okay so you can uh, see I, I need to confirm that this procedure uh, can uh, uh, will uh, uh, accurately uh, start up the plant without any problem so I can simulate the, the unit that I'm going to uh, start uh, it up uh, on HISES and define all the control loops and also I can uh, se uh, set the sequence of start up okay and uh, then run the, the plant in the dynamics and see it will if it will run smoothly or it will have uh, difficulties or uh, I have maybe uh, this valve should be uh, opened before another one I have to uh, rearrange uh, or uh, resort the, the the sequence itself so I can confirm the start up procedure or even develop it okay and as well as the shutdown procedure in startup and in the shutdown so you have to consider the uh, proper uh, procedure so you can test it before you uh, actually or really uh, done it okay so uh, uh, dynamic simulation uh, can uh, be the solution for you in order to better operate your plant okay uh, in order to start a model in dynamics I have first to start uh, to build it in a C state so uh, any case I have to fully uh, be, uh, set up uh, it in, 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 in C state before converting it to dynamics so steady state is very important to me okay okay now I have an example Okay, after this long introduction, <laughs> I need to uh, practice the, this example with you in order to uh, know what the, uh, how to deal with Aspen Heises in both this state as well as dynamics. In this example, you, you can see tank filling, okay. Uh, it's saying here that feed stream consists of uh, H2O, O2 and nitrogen. The feed stream conditions are 25 degrees Celsius, 3 bar gauge, and a mass flow rate of 4,000 kg per hour. This feed enters a valve before entering a tank. Pressure drop for all valves are 100 kPa. This is the final uh, case that I'll get, okay, for now after building this case and see what the how can I uh, start this case in dynamics mode so all I need that I need uh, the feed stream and valve then enter the tank and then uh, I, I'll have two process or two product streams the first one is the valve uh, the, the, the vapor stream and the second is the liquid stream okay so uh, I need to first start this case in steady state and see how to uh, configure it to uh, dynamics and how to install these controllers. Okay, okay. The, I need first to know what the what the objective from doing this. Okay, I, 
this uh, in this example okay i i am here uh, i i want here to uh, calculate the time required to fill this tank that's why it's a, it's called tank filling example so i need to see how long would it take to fill the tank from 0% to 50% inside the uh, volume of the tank so again now i'll start this uh, tank empty or dry and I'll close this product valve until it reaches 50% of volume okay and then I'll uh, open this valve back through the controller so I need to calculate the time required to fill the tank from 0% to 50% uh, okay so let's start doing this simulation Okay, I'm going to share uh, my screen with you right now, and please, if you if you are if you are not uh, uh, seeing this uh, high screen, please let me know in the chat. Okay, it will take time from my side. So uh, you are seeing now high window. Please confirm. I'll start sharing with you. Okay, what about now? You can see high stages. Please, if, if it's loading, uh, yeah, wait until it's, it's finished, okay? Okay. So, uh, please confirm again, if you are all have a screen sharing it's now showing high says okay okay it seems good for you all uh, uh, I'll disable uh, again the chat Okay, so now uh, I'm going to uh, start uh, simulating this example, okay? Uh, please remember that I'm going, I'm going to uh, upload this recording uh, after finished. So if you are facing technical problems, so uh, you will find all the uh, documents, uh, video and everything uploaded uh, maybe today uh, uh, afternoon or uh, tomorrow inshallah okay so uh, don't worry okay uh, but if you have a technical uh, question or questions or after the session as we agreed before on the Facebook page okay okay so uh, I'll start so I'll click new I'll try to make it uh, slow in order to uh, take uh, the proper time to uh, appear on your uh, on all uh, your of your screens. Okay, so now I'll uh, do the state simulation first. I'll define the components as well as flow package. Okay, from the component list, I'll press add and select the components. As we agreed before, we have H2O, oxygen, and nitrogen. Okay. All I did right now is I am just transferring the equipment, the components from the database or the data bank to the uh, equipment list that I'll uh, use uh, during this simulation. Then I'll go to the fluid package, okay, and then press add. Click on the add button. Again, I'll select the fluid package that suits my uh, case, which is in this case Ben Grubinson. Okay, 
it's stated here that I should utilize Bing Robinson. So I selected the fluid package or the equation from the uh, list. So now I'm ready to go for the simulation. Okay. In order to draw the, uh, the uh, flow sheet and uh, see what the results uh, after entering the required data. Okay. Now I am in the uh, simulation window. I'm going to utilize the ballot or use the ballot. Okay. Which, uh, by the way, you can hide or unhide this ballot by using F4 from the keyboard. Okay. So I'll draw the process from here in this white area, which called the BFD area. Okay. By using this uh, ballot. Okay. First, I have a material stream. Just to click here and to click in uh, any area you want to draw in. And then I'll define the data inside this stream by double click on the stream. Double click on the stream. Then the material stream window appears. So I can define the data that I have. Okay. Okay. You know previously from state state that if you... Uh, are facing a problem or if you are if you don't know what the data required for this object you can follow the instructions uh, by the uh, solver given by the solver which is available in the yellow bar in the bottom you can see here the solver says unknown composition so you can go to the composition first and uh, input your data and then see what's next so it will be updated uh, accordingly depending on the data that you are supplying and it will continue saying what the next okay what the next step so you have to make sure that the solver is always active okay so now I'll uh, input the data for the H2O I have 0.8 more fractions huh? it's all more fractions so I'll continue here. The oxygen will be 0.04. And finally, the nitrogen will be 0.16. The total should be always 1. Okay. Then I'll click OK. Now, what next? It's showing here that unknown temperature. So I'll go to the conditions and enter the temperature that I have, which is 25 degrees Celsius. Again, it's updating, okay? It's continuously updating the message, and uh, it's uh, uh, advising me what's next. Now, the next is pressure. Pressure here is 3 bar gauge, so you can select from the drop-down menu bar G, which means gauge, not absolute, okay? Maybe my, my uh, the, the data represented here might differ from yours because I'm utilizing here uh, a different unit set. If you are using SI, maybe it will uh, showing the data here in kilopascal, but it will be the same uh, conversion. Okay. Finally, the mass flow rate will be 4,000 kilogram per hour. Okay. So now the solver is saying, okay, now it means that I already fully defined the stream. Okay. No other data are required, and the, the rest of the data has been calculated by HISIS. Okay. Now, I finished my job here, so I'll move next to the valve, because he said that the, this feed stream enters a valve. So I'm going to uh, simulate the valve by clicking here again and clicking in the anyway here, anywhere. Again, double-click inside the valve, and... First, as you know before, uh, the main window is uh, under design con connections. Uh, here, it's all about connections. You just uh, want to, con to connect the streams to the equipment. So I need to connect stream one with the valve. And I'll define maybe stream two or stream outlet. Just give it any name. It's your case. You can give any name, OK? But make it easy to uh, be remembered. Uh, maybe if you open this case after some time you can uh, see what this stream means so I'll click here I'll type 2 
and click enter so it will create uh, another stream which is called two and link it to or connect it with the valve okay now it's showing again the solver is saying okay unknown delta b so i'm going to the parameters and defining 100 kilopascal in the delta b okay so I now fully uh, uh, define the valve. I'll move through next. This stream will enter a tank, which is our primary equipment. This tank, I'll select from here. You see in version 10, okay, you can, uh, the ballot may be, uh, may be uh, more organized. You can select, okay, uh, if I'm going to use uh, heat transfer equipment, I can select from here or I need the pressure changer or reactor or separator so I can select for example a tank here okay and if I want to show all I can click here on all okay so now in uh, the stream 2 will enter uh, the vessel or the tank stream 2 and I can give uh, outlet streams any name maybe it's Weber and this one will be liquid and here no need for uh, energy stream so till now I am doing it in steady state mode okay again I'll install two valves for each uh, for both uh, streams okay one by one here this first one and this is the second one and again I'll just uh, Weber to maybe Weber one, and again the parameters the delta B will be 100. All these data are given in the uh, PDF or in the uh, PowerPoint itself. Again, in the parameters 100. Uh, I forget to, to define the connections. Again, liquid, liquid one for example. Any name, okay. So now this uh, example is solved in steady state uh, properly. No need for defining any volume or size for the equipment. I'm just doing uh, material balance. Okay. So now I finished or I completed my uh, steady state case. I need to convert this case to dynamics. Okay. Let's see how we can uh, do this. First of all, before converting this into dynamic I have to see what the requirements I cannot just click on the bottom to dynamics without prepare the case to uh, the dynamics mode so in this state I'll prepare it to the dynamics okay so now uh, I'll go to the dynamics tab okay I'll not I'll not click on dynamics mode because I have First, to see what the requirements or what the data or what the items that need to be uh, modified or changed or considered before entering to the dynamic mode. Okay? So, there is a bottom here called dynamic assistant. Okay? Not dynamics mode, huh? Dynamic assistant, this button, you can click on it in order to see what is the requirements or what, the, uh, what are the items that needs my attention before converting this case from steady state to dynamics okay so if I click here dynamic assistant you can see a list maybe for more complex cases it will con um, contain maybe 10 or 12 item but this is a simple case it contains uh, three items only so this assistant will help you to know what are the missing data or what are the items that needs your attention okay so what are those uh, data represent first one it's disable stream flow specifications did you get it for me it's not clear okay enable stream pressure specification 
I don't know what he's talking about right now. Uh, volumes not known. Maybe it's you can uh, yeah you can see okay volumes not known. It means that uh, some volumes for some equipment needs to be uh, defined. So it's a maybe the last one is clear for us. But what about the other two? Okay. So now I'll explain what are the requirements and what are the main requirements in order to change any case from steady state to dynamics and this is the most important part in this session okay so forget about this window i'll get it uh, to it back again in order to prepare or in order to uh, make this case ready for dynamics i have to consider three uh, main changes to this uh, to any uh, state simulation uh, in order to uh, make it uh, ready for the dynamics okay the first thing you know that the dynamic simulation is the real plant simulation so you didn't even define the volume of the vessel so you need to proper size or define the data uh, for the sizing for each equipment. You have the data sheet for the valves, you have the data sheet for the uh, uh, vessel, so you have to enter this data in order to make this equipment real or actual, okay, like the one that you have in the plant. I have to define the dimension, the volume, the, the, the size of each equipment. It applies for towers, heat exchangers, vessels, valve, all. Each equipment I am uh, using in the simulation, I have to make it real. So I have to do the equipment sizing. First thing is equipment sizing. Okay. It means equipment sizing either by high sys tools. If I if I'm running the plant for if I'm doing a design, so I have to uh, first size each equipment and see what the sizing, uh, the the proper sizing for for the uh, feed flow that I have. Okay. Or if I'm simulating an existing plant which is my case here so i already have the the data sheets for each equipment so i all, all all i have to do is to copy or to define the data from the data sheet and enter it here in heises okay so let's start now i'm going to uh, do the equipment sizing so i have to open each equipment here and define the sizing data that i have so Okay, what the, the data that I have right now? Let's see. I'll share with you again the presentation. So now I have equipment sizing. I have the tank volume of three meter cube, okay? And I have the valve CV, which means the valve coefficient or the resistance or the sizing uh, parameter for the valves, which is the CV. I have for the feed valve, I have 70. And for both liquid valves, I have 50. Okay. So I, I'm going to define this data in the simulation. Okay, I'll start with the tank. Double click on the tank and I'll go to dynamics. I'll go to dynamics. Okay, so uh, you, now we are still in the steady state. So dynamics step is here from the beginning. Okay, it's like worksheet tab, rating tab, reactor tab. It's here from the beginning. So uh, the dynamic step uh, contains the, the the data, the minimum data that needs to be defined in order to uh, uh, switch this case from steady state to dynamic or switch with this uh, equipment from steady state to dynamics. Okay? Okay. So, I'm going to uh, define the vessel volume of 3 meter. 
cube okay and if I have the rest of data volume vessel volume vessel diameter vessel height I can enter or I can keep the uh, height assumptions okay I'm going now to uh, keep uh, height assumptions and another th important thing to be considered that liquid volume percent you remember in this case that I need to uh, calculate the uh, the time required to fill the tank from 0 to 50 percent so I cannot start the tank with 50 percent then <laughs> to, uh, I'll not calculate the time because in dynamic the time uh, is important so it will start the tank at the time 0 with 50 percent so I cannot leave it like this I have to up to the same function dry start up means at the beginning of the dynamic simulation this tank will uh, uh, empty with 0% liquid and then it will accumulate the liquid inside the tank until it reaches uh, 50% which will be the 50% itself I will define the controllers set point okay if I have any other data regarding the size of the equipment I can continue adding this data from rating okay so rating tab here contains a detailed data about the size or the uh, equipment itself but you need if you uh, uh, if you didn't uh, change thing now so I recommend you to fill uh, out all this data okay either or if this separator has put but this is a tank okay so if if you have any other data you can define here otherwise the ISIS will use the assumptions okay and here I'll use these assumptions okay, okay. so now I did the sizing for the uh, vessel itself or for the separator okay and I'm going to uh, for the valves as well. In order to uh, size the valve, I'll go again to the dynamics. Okay. You remember that in this case we have a CV which represents the sizing for the valve. Okay. So I'll go to the CV and write 70. Okay. So now I did the sizing part. By the way, Heises can uh, calculate the CV for the for the valve. If I go through rating, I can click on size valve. I can click size valve here. Size valve will calculate the CV. CV represents the resistance of the valve. Okay, resistance of the valve to the flow. Each uh, valve has its uh, own CV. For example, if I have a fissure valve, uh, it will state it in the data sheet that this valve CV uh, uh, is 100, 370 as I have. And I'll just want to, uh, I'll add this uh, data here. Okay. You know, you can see the CV uh, units. It's US, US uh, gallon per minute at 60 degree Fahrenheit, 1 psi. Okay. So you can say, that it's uh, the the resistance to the flow if uh, if if you if you can see that uh, okay i have water that's running through the orifice of the valve so uh, uh, this cv represents the the coefficient or the the resistance to the flow uh, represented in us gallon per minute at 60 degree fahrenheit and creating a pressure drop of 1 psi okay so that uh, it's uh, the meaning of the CV and maybe I, I'll share with you some data regarding th the CV itself okay so you can uh, do the sizing by either calculate the size of the CV you, ca you can see once I clicked on the size valve the CV changed so I just calculate the CV which uh, he calculates it to be uh, uh, 76 
but for my, in my case it's 70 because another thing uh, should be considered in the rating here so if you have the full data sheet of the bump of the valve you can either uh, enter the cv or you can uh, use the size valve by uh, uh, adjusting the other options either it's a valve operating characteristics it's linear or quick opening or equal uh, percentage i'll share with you uh, a graph about what the difference between uh, the valve operating characteristics linear quick opening and uh, equal percentage okay so now i already uh, entered the cv but please uh, make sure that after, <laughs> after uh, inputting the data i cannot click on the size valve again because size valve will uh, calcul recalculate the cv so if you have the CV, just type it here. If you need HISIS to calculate the CV, uh, just change the parameters and calculate size valve. Okay. In this case, I have the CV. Again, it's more, it's it's important to take uh, care or take uh, attention about this. So you can enter the CV from rating or from dynamic. Okay. Again, I'll do the same for other valves okay for other liquid valve and i have cv of 50 okay and for the vapor valve if i go through dynamics here i cannot change the cv how can i overcome this problem normally uh, the uh, the valves that are installed on the vapor streams uh, it's sized uh, based on CG not CV so if you go through uh, to the rating tab you can find that sizing method is, is CG not CV but here I don't have CG so I'll input CV and Heises will calculate the CG so I have here the CV so I have to change sizing method sizing method from CV to CG uh, to, from CG to CV because I have CV if I have CG I'll keep it CG and define the, the CG value C CG for gas okay but here I have CV so I'll just type 50 so now I did the first part and I already sized all the equipment or um, maybe you cannot say size because because I already entered all the data so I just copied the data from the data sheet to the HISIS uh, and doing the first step which means equipment sizing okay okay next what what's next now the second step in uh, check, uh, converting this case in steady state from from steady state to dynamic, and please remember that we are still in steady state. We're still on steady state. Okay, I'm doing all of this, which by the way will not affect the steady state results. Okay, it will uh, imba take the effect of uh, when transitioning from steady state to dynamic. Okay, the second step is. Uh, making sure that all the equipment that I have installed will calculate the pressure drop in the dynamics mode from the pressure flow equations okay so okay you remembered we uh, for each for all for all the valves I already supplied the Delta B of 100 from the design parameters I already supplied the delta B of 100 kilopascals okay and then it's fixed number you can see it's for all the uh, for, for all the equipment it's a fixed number 100 100 100 okay in steady state the delta B will be fixed and is it's acceptable because uh, the process is, is a steady state no change will happen okay but in dynamics disturbance always happens so the delta B will not remain constant okay 
the delta B will not remain constant. Why? Because you know that in order to transfer the fluid from stream 1 to the product stream, a pressure gradient should be present. So in order to properly have a pressure a pressure a proper pressure gradient in this case so so the delta b uh, flow relationship i have relationships that controls the uh, the, the 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 delta b with uh, that links the the pressure with the flow okay what whenever the flow changes the pressure will change okay so i cannot use the fixed pressure drop in the in the dynamics it will not accept okay ice will not accept uh, such thing so in a steady state it's accepted because i'm not going to change anything in this case and the process is steady state but in the dynamics the pressure the flow is pressure driven so if the, if the pressure gradient is uh, is not homogeneous or is not consistent the uh, maybe back pressure will happen or back flow will happen so the delta b will be calculated according the uh, the flow rate that is supplied or if if it, if it changes the delta b will definitely change which is the actual or the real simulation the, uh, the situation in your plant you know, you know the delta b inside each equipment uh, will be uh, affected by the uh, changing of uh, any parameter like flow or other parameters but mainly flow okay so I have to make sure that ISIS are now utilizing the pressure flow relationship in the dynamics mode in state mode definitely he will use the delta B that I, I have supplied either from the from the dynamics total delta B in the dynamics specification or in the dynamics mode all the data uh, are presented here will be utilized in the dynamic so make sure just all all, all we need the, just to make sure that high is, is checking on the pressure flow relationship instead of total delta b which means that in dynamics he he will ignore the 100 kilopascal that i i entered before in the city state so 100 kilopascal will be used only in steady state. Once it trans transitioning the case from steady state to dynamic, pressure flow relationship will be utilized, okay? I have to make sure that pressure flow relationship is, ut uh, is utilized for all the valves. Again, in dynamics, you can see that the checkbox, uh, there is a mark on the checkbox for pressure flow relationship, okay? Make sure, just make sure. You can see once once you remove the check, okay, all the dynamic specification data are not available. And if you clicked on the delta B, he will not accept. It will be uh, it will uh, appear in the dynamic assistant that something wrong is here. If I clicked on the dynamic assistant now, okay, now he's saying enable pressure flow equation or pressure drop. So it's not accepted to use fixed delta B inside the dynamics. Okay, so the dynamic assistant will always have a problem and it will not transition until you uh, completed all the tasks here. Okay, so again, you have to make sure that the delta B will be floating or flexible or be changeable uh, with uh, flow and do not be fixed number. Okay. For valves, it's by default, It's uh, the checkbox is here. You can uh, make sure that it's clicked. Uh, for, uh, for the vessels or for uh, tanks, for separators, normally, uh, uh, if, you, if you enter in the dynamics, okay, you cannot find any option regarding the uh, uh, fixed delta B or pressure flow relationship. So in the dynamics, just make sure that it's not uh, the, the the vessel pressure checkbox is not here. Okay, 
and by by default it will uh, the, the the pressure drop will be calculated uh, uh, inside the vessel during the dynamics okay so now I already uh, prepared the uh, case but the third main uh, uh, step is still uh, bending so now first I did the sizing or I entered all the data about the sizing uh, for each equipment that I have second part is to make sure that all the equipment are will uh, utilize pressure flow relationship not the uh, fixed delta B in the dynamics mode and the third one which is the important one is that uh, in the dynamics mode you have to confirm that all boundary streams have pressure specifications active which means first I have to know what what uh, what meant by uh, the boundary streams what are the boundary streams boundary streams means stream one stream vapor one stream liquid one all other streams are internal streams which is between the equipment itself for example if I need to uh, make around this uh, unit or this plant so how how will I I'll, I'll calculate uh, how I will calculate the uh, the material uh, inlet and the material outlet for the entire plant shall I consider stream vapor or stream 2 or stream liquid no I'll only consider stream 1 stream vapor stream liquid which represents the main and the main broader okay? maybe I have a stream here and recycled back here if I have a stream here and they're going to another exchanger and they're going to another distillation tower and they're going uh, then to operator I'm not I only consider the final inlet or the final I have to first identify the boundary streams boundary streams okay I have three boundary streams here one two three what shall I do on these boundary streams the same as I did for the the the, the, the vessels on the equipment what happened I I first open the equipment and go for the dynamic step Again, in the, in the in those streams, I have already a dynamic tab as well. Okay, I have to consider what should be considered in order to make the flow uh, uh, pressure driven. I have to just fix the uh, the pressure on the boundaries, which means that I have here for each uh, uh, for each stream I have two specification and the, the other is flow specification okay so I'll fix the pressure okay for the boundaries in order to maintain the pressure constant at the boundaries and the pressure drops inside the uh, the, the other streams will be floating depending on the actual uh, the pressure of the other streams will be uh, depending on the pressure drop inside the equipment itself okay so the last st uh, step in order to convert the case from steady state to dynamic is to make sure that dynamic specification the pressure specification only is active not the flow okay dynamic specification only is, uh, is active I'll do the same not for the internal streams only for the boundaries which means one vapor one liquid one I'll go to dynamics and fix the pressure okay again here fix only the pressure if I have a check uh, mark on the uh, on this check box of, of the flow I can I have to remove only keep the pressure okay what the meaning of keeping the pressure and what now I fix the pressure okay I understand this why not the flow because this streams the flow is controlled already by valves so I cannot make uh, I cannot uh, fix this uh, 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 flow rates you cannot see here that okay the flow rate here will be fixed because the flow rate here, uh, here will be depend on the valve opening right 
So whatever the valve opening here, so the flow will be changed here, okay? And again, I'm fixing the pressure, uh, the delta B, uh, the pressure here. Then the pressure of this stream will be calculated from the valve delta B here. And again, for this stream, the once I have the pressure and I have the delta B here, then the, the pressure here will be calculated. And for the uh, vessel also. So you can uh, you can easily understand that the third part is important for uh, in order to make the case in dynamic solved. So I need to uh, make some of the unknown data to make it known, or some of the unknown variables to be known in order to make the degree of freedom equal zero, which means that the number of unknown variables equal the number of uh, equations. So it should be in order to any uh, any mathematical model to converge, uh, you have to consider that the number of unknown variables should be always uh, uh, the same as the number of uh, unknown variables. So what I did here is to, I have a lot of variables here and only four equations, one, two, three, four, and I have here pressure and temperature here pressure and temperature, and here pressure and temperature, and inside the vessel is, uh, I, have, I need pressure. So how many unknown variables I have? How many unknown variables I actually have? In dynamics, it's all about pressure and, temperature, uh, pressure and flow. So stream one, pressure and flow, two variables. Stream vapor one, pressure and flow, another two variables. Now it's count four. And third one, it's another two variables, which now it's six variables, six unknown variables, plus have variables right now, okay? And how many equation I have? I have equation, pressure flow equ uh, equation for each equipment, for uh, the three valves, I have three pressure flow equations, and for the vessel, I have one pressure flow equation. How many equations in total I have? I have here four equations and seven unknown variables. So if I, I did a degree of freedom analysis, I can see unknown variables, seven minus unknown equations is four, uh, available equations is four, seven minus four is three. Okay, so I need either to supply another three equations, which is impossible in this case, because I only have three uh, four equipment, okay? or three out of seven should be known. Three variables should be known. I have seven unknown, so in order to make uh, four uh, equal four or four unknown variables and four equations, so I have to make three of the seven unknowns to be known. So I defined or I, I already uh, gave uh, the 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 highest is the pressure of the stream feed and the pressure of the both products. So now only four unknown variables are I need to be calculated. Okay. So in order to uh, the transition or convert any case from state state to dynamics, you have to uh, consider the three main uh, items that uh, should be considered. The first one is the equipment sizing. The second one is the pressure flow relationship. The third one is uh, to uh, uh, enable the pressure flow or the, the, the pressure specification on the boundary streams. The boundary streams means that the stream that is connected from one side only or the stream that will be present if I, if I did uh, an overall material balance for the uh, process. Okay, so in order to recap what I have did, I already input the size for each equipment from the dynamics or in the, the rating, okay? And I make sure that the pressure flow relationship is active. For the valves, I can uh, make sure easily, but for the tank, it's not appearing here. But by the way, if this button is not checked, that means that uh, the, this uh, the pressure flow relationship is will be utilized in the dynamics, 
And the last one is make sure that the boundary streams, all the boundary streams are uh, pressure specifications are active. Okay. Now, if I go to the dynamic assistant and uh, press click here, I can find that the assistant didn't identify any problems. So, no items are uh, needed anymore here in order to make this case ready. And I, again, I'm still in the steady state. And all the data that I have changed, it will not be, uh, it, uh, the results will, be, will not be affected in the steady state, but it will be affected only when I, I go to the dynamics mode, okay? Please make sure that when you are going to the dynamic assistant, please make sure that the checkbox here is uh, is. Okay. Now I am ready, but I'll not move to steady state. I'll not move to uh, steady state until uh, I finish another job or another task. Okay. I need first to install the controllers. Okay. I have here in this case two controllers should be installed. I need to control the feed flow rate and I need also to control the uh, the vessel liquid percent level because we said that I need to monitor or I need to calculate the time required to fill the tank. Okay. So now the tank is zero. So I need to install a controller here that uh, control the uh, liquid volume percent. Okay and make it set point to 50%, okay? Okay, how I can do this? Now I can go, go to dynamics and the control from the palette in order to install the three controllers that I need. Dynamics and the control, okay? I can find here, there is a BID controller, PID controller, okay? The BID controller, I'll use to control the uh, the field stream as well as to control the uh, liquid level inside the uh, tank. Okay. Okay. Let's see how we can do it. I'll install a BID control first to control the feed uh, flow rate of stream one. So I'll click here. There is a controller, and again I'm still in the C state, but I prefer to even define the controllers from the steady state because if you have any problem if you if you did any uh, uh, type of problem or if you entered a wrong value in steady state okay and then transition from steady state to dynamic once in the uh, you get in dynamic you cannot get back to steady state again so you have to reopen the steady state case to solve the problem and then convert to uh, dynamics again again now, if you have, if, if, if by mistake you selected any wrong option in a state state case and converted to the dynamics and a problem happened in dynamics, you cannot solve the problem in dynamics. You have to return to the state state case to solve, to solve the problem and then uh, switch it to uh, dynamics. If, if it's uh, about type of problem of, or something that means that uh, you enter the data that uh, maybe uh, result in a, a, an explosion in, in reality. So sometimes when you are going to dynamics, uh, it will uh, go to the uh, non-return point. So uh, if you want to uh, fix this issue back, you should open the state case. That's why you remember that in the dynamic assistant, I checked on, on the uh, state state checkbox. What will happen? If uh, the, uh, because I checked the safe state, state uh, checkbox, if I clicked on the dynamics mode, but please don't click, please don't click right now, okay? If I clicked on the dynamics mode, okay, Hisis will save a backup in C state. So <coughs> if you face any problem in dynamics, you can get back to the C state again from the save the case that uh, you already have, okay? Uh, no, that's why I'm saying, uh, if...
you go to the null uh, return uh, end so you have to open the system case if you uninstall the control in the dynamic so you will lose all the data all the control that you did all the work that you did in dynamic and uh, again uh, did, uh, uh, you have to uh, define the controls again so i prefer to even to complete the case in steady state and just run it in dynamic even controllers strip chart trains everything prepare it in the steady state okay so i'll uh, install a controller okay this is bid controller from the ballot okay now it's saying here that i need to control the mass flow rate of the inlet stream so again it's like an, any other equipment or any other object okay i need to first define the connections i need to uh, tell uh, the software which stream is inlet and which stream is outlet okay in the controllers you know in the process control i have an inlet stream okay and uh, i need to control uh, I, or i have a process variable that i need to control by taking an action when a disturbance happens for example let's see what i have here okay For example, if I have this tank, okay, I need to control the liquid percent level inside this tank, okay, so I need to install a controller here. Okay, now I have a liquid inlet, or a liquid flow rate, and I have a liquid inlet and liquid product. So, in order to control the liquid flow rate inside the tank, I have to uh, see uh, first what what are the disturbances that affect this uh, level okay so suppose that I have uh, okay I have here uh, the liquid percent level is 50 percent and I need it to remain 50 percent okay so what are the possible disturbances that might affect this uh, this level inside the tank we can see okay one of the disturbances that may uh, impact the level maybe it's uh, the flow rate of the feed right if i change the flow rate of the feed and maintaining the 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 same flow rate of the liquid so maybe the liquid here will, uh, level will will change maybe if this tank uh, is open and uh, maybe i ha i am in the winter and it's raining so maybe the tank will be affected by the the water coming from the sky so um, i have several disturbances so i need whatever the disturbances that uh, might upset my process i need to take the correct action i need to take uh, the correct action in order to uh, get the uh, set point or the process variable to the set point again okay so we can say here okay that i have just a moment Okay, I can see here that process variable. BV will be the liquid and the set point. equal 50% okay
So now, I need to maintain a set point of 50%. Set point means the value that uh, I need to uh, to fix the, the tank level to be 50%, okay? Which, which means set point, okay? And the process variable, liquid percent level, which represents the current value, which represents the current value of liquid percent level, okay? Which may be, right now, maybe you can say uh, 60%. Some disturbance uh, happened, and it result in a liquid percent level of 60%, and I need to change it back to the set point, which is 50%. What should I do? I have to install a control strategy that will make the uh, the set point uh, the, the process variable uh, equal the, the set point again okay so okay i can see i can say that i need to install the controller here that first measure the the the, the, the current liquid percent level so i have to install a controller that measure the current liquid percent level and then send this value to the controller which compares the current value the process variable value with the set point okay in the controllers i already have the set point of 50 and now the measuring device is is measuring that okay i have the current process variable is 60 percent so the controllers calculate the errors okay so it will say okay i have here uh, process variable equals 60% and set point is 50%. So the error will be 10%. The error equal error at time t because all this uh, value, uh, the process variable are now at time t. So error at time percent. So the controller now have to take an action in order to eliminate the disturbance. Eliminate this 10% error. Okay, so what should I do now? I have to take the corrective action. I have to select the manipulated variable, variable that quickly eliminate this disturbance. In this case, I can select either the product stream valve or the feed stream valve both will control the uh, uh, will eliminate the disturbance for example if now i have 60 percent so i have 10 percent extra so i'll increase the valve opening of the product stream in order to drain more liquid okay so we, as we agreed before the the valve opening maybe normal now are from 30 to 70 percent okay if we can see maybe it's uh, for 50 percent okay so i need to increase the valve opening maybe to 55 percent in order to drain more uh, liquid from the tank until it reaches the set point again which is uh, 50 percent okay what i did now it's uh, it said a feedback control loop feedback control loop means that uh, it will take the action after disturbance happened. So after the liquid level changed from 50 to 60, I will take an action. Maybe it's not directly from 50 to 60. Maybe it's f from 52, 55, 56. It depends. So uh, the controller will be automatically take the, the, the proper action okay, in order to eliminate the error or to eliminate the disturbance. So I'll measure the flow rate from the tank and send it to control it will be through this control valve which if the flow rate if the level here is increased so i need to drain more liquid if the flow rate here is uh, decreased or the level decreased below the set point so i need to close to uh, increase or decrease the uh, valve opening here in order to hold up more liquid inside uh, the tank okay 
So, I install the controllers that do the same job for both liquid level inside the tank and the uh, control the feed flow for the feed stream. So again, if I want to control the feed flow of the feed stream, so what I will do is to measure the flow rate and then if the flow rate is higher than expected, so I'll reduce the valve opening of valve uh, 100. And if the flow rate is uh, lower than I expected, so I'll uh, incre increase the valve opening to uh, increase the flow rate uh, that should be entered the tank. Okay, so what will be the process variable source? The process variable will be the mass flow rate of stream one mass flow rate of stream one so now i'll click on select bv and i'll select stream one and then select mass flow okay so now i select and selected the physical variable type mass flow and finally selected the mass flow from the uh, last uh, uh, box okay now you can see that the input to the controller will, will be the process variable he will measure now how much is the flow rate okay okay and what next after a measure the controller will compare with the set point which will i'll define later Okay, and then t take an action. The action will be taken on the valve 100, which will by changing the valve opening itself. Okay, so I'll select the output. Okay, I can see valve 100, and I can select actuator desired position because here the actuator will control the valve opening through the stem okay so now I selected valve 100 and selected actuator desired position and click OK or select now whenever flow changed it will be overcome or the correct action will be taken by the control valve in order to overcome any disturbance that will happen okay okay now, again, the solver is saying unknown range for pressure process variable. Okay, so I'll go to the parameters and see what the data that I have. Okay. I have here the controller data for liquid uh, LIC liquid indicator controller and FIC uh, as well. I am here started with the FIC, okay, flow indicator controller, okay, and here uh, LIC level indicator controller. So I'll start with the flow indicator controller. Now he's saying that set point is 4,000, okay? And I have a minimum process variable is zero and the maximum process variable of 9,000, okay? So I'll, in this window, I'll start with from the middle, okay? So I'll uh, input here from zero to 9,000, which means that I'm expecting a disturbance from zero to 9,000. So the controller will take an action if it returns to zero or through 9,000 and in between. So this is the minimum and maximum uh, uh, span of the controller that the uh, controller will measure the flow rate within this range and take the action, which would be to proper select the, uh, the measuring device and transmitters and all control uh, loop components. So, in this example, in this particular example, I am expecting a flow see uh, every time if it changed within this range, it will take the correct action. Okay, now, 
I need to uh, see what are the the data, the rest of data. In the in this window, all the data are important. In this window, all the data are. You cannot ignore any data. You cannot ignore uh, any data in this window. Okay, you have to uh, because if you selected. Uh, Maybe if you are selected uh, a reverse, a direct action instead of reverse action, uh, it will maybe, okay, you have to select the right parameters, okay? So the operational parameters here are very important to be filled correctly. So the first thing is action. What meant by action, reverse or direct? In this case, what will happen if the process variable uh, which is the mass flow rate change. And if I'm saying, okay, I need here the flow rate to be 4,000. Flow rate here. What will happen? What will happen in this valve? Because the valve here is the final control element that will take the action to correct that to uh, get it back to the set point. So, if the uh, mass flow rate here decreases okay so i have to increase or decrease the valve opening in this example if again if the flow rate of the feet decreases from 4000 to 3000 and suppose that the valve opening now is 50 percent okay so should i reduce the valve opening or increase the valve opening in this case of course i need to uh, increase the valve opening because I have a, a, a flow rate of uh, 2000 or 3000 so I have to increase the valve opening in, over, in order to overcome uh, the, these disturbances so uh, and by the way you can either make the process variable from uh, for stream 1 or stream 2 to be the same here in this okay but for you know, for uh, basic uh, any clarification I bought it from stream 1 and I can change it for stream 2 so, uh, if if the flow rate decreases, because maybe this this stream definitely will be uh, yeah, take from a tank or something like this. So, if the flow rate here decreases, so I'll increase the uh, valve opening. So now, if the flow rate decreases, I'll increase the valve opening. So the relationship here is reverse. The relationship here is reverse. If I if the flow rate or, or if the process variable decrease, I'll increase the 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 the, the, the process variable uh, change uh, will be uh, the action will be rever uh, uh, will be uh, reverse or will be reduced. So the action here, uh, sorry, the action here will be uh, the increasing the valve opening to. Uh, keep the flow rate at 4000 okay so the relationship here is uh, reverse uh, action okay this the controller mode i can if i want to disable this controller i can select off if i want to manually uh, control uh, or manually uh, change the valve opening so i can select manual if i want to, the valve opening to be uh, automatically changed regarding the uh, 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 the set uh, uh, or differ from the set point, so the uh, the action will be automatically uh, calculated for the uh, opening of the valve. Okay, which will be the current mode. Indicator is just an in, uh, indicator. It, it will only show the flow rate uh, all the time. Uh, but without taking any action. So, it, it's all here about the manual and the auto. Okay? Manual, you consider yourself the controller. So, you can see on the screen the, uh, the current process variable and you have stored in your mind that the set point is uh, differ, uh, different than the uh, the process variable that you you saw right now so you will see or you will input the 
uh, the opening of the valve in order to overcome this uh, this uh, upset or disturbance. But in the in the auto mode, Heises will calculate the error, okay, the deviation of the process variable uh, from the set point and calculate the opening and automatically uh, send it to the valve, okay. So it will calculate uh, the valve. So I'll select auto, okay. The execution here, it's internal or external, internal because I, I'll, I'm taking all data from the HICES, not from the uh, DCS, because you can you have the ability to connect your uh, HICES uh, simulation software to your uh, uh, DCS system or historian data, so you can uh, get the data from the, the system itself or internally from the HICES, and here most of our simulation cases will be internally uh, executed. The set point, he said that it's 4,000 and I, I'll keep it 4,000. You can see here in this uh, case that the process variable is 4,000 uh, 4, uh, and the set point is 4,000. Uh, that means that the error here equals zero. Okay? So, uh, I'll see uh, how to create a disturbance uh, maybe after a while, okay. Now the opening will be 50. It's in the normal opening that uh, the controller took from the uh, valve, yani because we already previously uh, defined the valve opening of 50%, so by the default it, uh, it transferred here to the uh, controller, okay. And you cannot change it uh, when uh, selecting auto mode. You can change the opening only if you selected the manual mode. But if you selected the manual mode, that means that the controller will not take the action uh, automatically. Okay? So I'll keep auto. And finally, the tuning parameters, which I think it needs uh, a session <laughs> to explain what the meaning of tuning parameters. So I'll share with you some documents or some videos that uh, uh, illustrates the tuning, what the meaning of tuning, and maybe maybe I can conduct another session maybe uh, later, later on, and uh, explain what the meaning of tuning parameter. But uh, till now, I have here in the uh, bar point, I have the uh, KC of 0.5 and TI of 1, KC 0.5, TI of 1. Okay, uh, quickly, what's the meaning of tuning parameter? This is the response of the controller. So incre increasing or decreasing these values will affect the response. It will affect, uh, okay, this controller is, is uh, you know, slow and I need it to be faster. So I'll increase the uh, KC and decrease the TI depending on the uh, control, uh, uh, either it's a, a PI, proportional integral, or proportional integral derivative, or even a proportion only, okay? So, uh, maybe I, I'll conduct a, another session for this uh, particular uh, uh, subject, okay? But you, you need to know that these values that will affect the response of your controller. It's uh, fast or slow, you can uh, change, okay? Okay, now, if I define the KC and TI only, it, that means that PI. If I define the TD as well, it will be PID, proportional integral derivative. So this control is now, it's PI only. If I define the KC only, it will be proportional only, P only. Okay, for this example, it's now PI, proportional integral. Okay, so now the controller is uh, already uh, set up. So I can see a face plate that summarize what's inside this controller. I can press on the face plate. It will summarize the process variable. It's now 4,000. And you can see the red mark. The red mark, this is the set point. Now it's it's uh, it's lying, uh, it's on the, the the BV because they are all, uh, the, uh, both are equal or the same, okay? And the current opening is 50%. If I change the set point to, for example, 6,000, what will happen here, you can see that the process variable is 4,000, but set point is the uh, red mark, which is far 
from the uh, set point uh, process variable uh, uh, of 4000 which is 6000 that's why they are not uh, on the same uh, scale okay so if I return it back to 4000 you can see now they are uh, equal okay and you can change the uh, the controller mode from here also so this window will have in your control system in the CS system okay it will be the same it, it, it display uh, three parameters BV and set point and opening or B lay opening okay so if I close this window I can return it to it back by click on the tuning button okay so now I installed the uh, first controller and uh, now I'm going to install the second one okay the second one will be BID control also and I need to control the liquid percent level inside the tank and the take the action on the uh, product valve liquid product valve which is valve 102 okay valve 102 it will be the uh, the final control element in this case and the process variable will be the liquid percent uh, from the tank so I'll install the controller again double click and uh, select the process variable source which is uh, from the vessel itself now it's the object will not a stream it will be from the vessel itself uh, v100 I'll select uh, Maybe it's not search it liquid percent liquid percent level level because if you selected liquid level this you have to or the height in meters for example or inches but liquid percent level displayed in uh, in in person because. If you, if you need to uh, maybe of the 50 percent of the uh, uh, of the uh, of the tank okay collected liquid level so you can you have to calculate how uh, how much 50 percent of the entire uh, height of the tank okay but in the liquid percent level you can just say 50 percent and the height will calculate the percent okay so um, measuring the process variable which is taking action on the valve 100 to product stream so whenever the uh, the levels the valve will uh, increase its opening or decrease its opening uh, to over the disturbance now i'll go to the parameters again because you know, i need to define the range for process variable I need to see here okay it's from 0 to 100 which is the expected uh, change in the level it will be minimum of 0 percent and maximum of 100 of the tank okay so again I have to see what the action here it's reverse or direct what will happen if the liquid level increases what will happen if the process variable increase or the liquid liquid inside the tank increase to increase or decrease the uh, valve opening if the liquid level increases the valve opening okay so it's here direct relationship okay it's proportional so now here I'll select direct if I select it reverse of course <laughs> it will a great damage in my plan because if I select a reverse in this case so I am decreasing the uh, the liquid uh, valve uh, stream valve. I'm decreasing the opening of the liquid uh, product uh, valve okay so I am accumulating more liquid inside okay and which, which will uh, definitely decrease the volume of the gas inside and increase the pressure of the vapor inside which 
may need uh, leads to an uh, explosion or something. Selecting the action is the most. So uh, liquid level increases. I'll increase the valve opening to maintain the liquid percent at 50%. So I'll keep it direct. The mode here, I'll change it to auto again. And another important thing, I'll not keep the set point zero. Keeping the set point zero means that, okay, the, the liquid will be always, uh, the, this tank will be always empty. But in my case, I need to calculate the time required to fill the tank. So I'll make the set point 50%. I need to fill 50% uh, 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 of the tank. So I need to calculate the time. So now the BV is 0%. The current value, the zero I defined before, set point is 50%. Okay. So uh, all I need now is to uh, run this the rest of data in order to calculate the time that will take from uh, getting from 0 to 50. Again, I need to see what the, the KC will be 0.5 and the TI will be 5. KC 0.5, TI 5. And now, my uh, controllers it again here P is 50 okay make sure that controllers are auto okay and both opening are 50 percent right now okay. okay now what's next he's saying here A strip chart with the controllers uh, in an industry you know what's the meaning of trend okay I need to see the change of the flow rate or uh, the change in the level with time so the trend is monitoring a process variable with time with, with the time so the time will be the x-axis and the process variable will be on the uh, uh, vertical uh, axis, okay? So I need to create a strip chart, which means a trend in HISIS. Trend means strip chart. So I need to finally draw a curve that will be dynamically changed with time. And I need to see the trend of, uh, or the, the curve of changing the floor, uh, the, the liquid level inside the tank with the time. Okay, so in order to do that, I'll go to the Dynamics tab, and in the Tools, I'll select Strip Chart. Strip Chart means Trend in HISIS, okay? Or Trend means uh, Strip Chart in HISIS. I clicked on the Strip Chart, and now in the Strip Chart window, I'll, I can add several trends. I can make a trend for... Uh, uh, liquid percent level. I can make a trend for temperatures controllers, and I make a, I can make a, uh, a trend for uh, pressure density. Any process variable that I want to monitor, I can uh, select from here. So I can make several strip charts. Here, in this case, I'll only create only one strip chart. I'll click Add. Okay. Maybe I'll increase the logar sample to. Uh, one million, no problem. That will enable me to go back to the historian data for a longer time, okay? So maybe I can change the strip chart name to maybe trend. Okay, maybe I can say level trend, okay? I can edit to define the variables that I need to uh, present in this strip chart or this trend. So I can click edit, okay, and go to the setup and add the variables. So now all I did is selecting strip chart from here 
And after opening the strip chart, I changed the logger size in order to increase the samples. And then clicked add and then uh, first click the add and then change the logger size and then clicked edit. Okay. Now I'm in the trend. I can define the variables that I need to display. Add. Okay. Now I need from the vessel 100. I need from the vessel. I need to monitor the liquid percent level. Okay. So I need to monitor the liquid percent level. And by the way, here you are only selecting the vertical axis, which is the y-axis. Because the x-axis will be definitely the time. You don't have to uh, uh, select it. Okay. So I need now to see the liquid percent level. The, here the liquid percent level will be the measured value of the liquid percent level. Maybe it's 60%, 70%. I need uh, to draw also the, a reference line which uh, will be the set point. So I need on the same curve, I need to see uh, uh, the set point as well as the BV. If, are, if, they, uh, if, if both are identical, so the, it, it will be one line. If there is a, a deviation of, uh, for, from the set point, so two lines will be uh, shown in the case. Okay. So I'll add another variable. Now the set point I entered from the LIC itself, liquid, liquid uh, indica level indicator controller. And I'll select the, again, I'll select here set point, SP. And by the way, instead of selecting uh, the liquid person level from the V100, I can select it from the liquid ind indicator control itself, level indicator control itself. I can select, uh, instead of uh, set point, I can select BV. So I can uh, define the liquid, the actual liquid percent level or the BV either from the vessel itself or from the controller. Okay. Now I'll click on display to see the trend. Yeah, of course, it's now empty because I'm still in the steady state. <laughs> okay, so nothing happens. Time is now zero and it's not no dynamic. Okay, so it's now uh, not showing anything. So because time zero is not started yet, you can see the x-axis is the time. Okay. Okay. Final thing is... It's saying here, run the integrator for 180 minutes with acceleration of 0.5. So, I need here to uh, run the integrator for a specific uh, time. So, from the dynamics, I can see... Okay. From the dynamics, I can see that there is a uh, uh, in the run of integrator. Integrator. So I'll click on the integrator. Okay. He's asking me what the end time. Non-stop means that if I clicked on the dynamic mode and then clicked on run, it will run for infinity. Okay, it will has no end. So now I need, once I click run, I need it to run for only three hours. Okay, because he's saying here, run the integrator for 180 minutes with acceleration of 0.5. So now the this dynamic uh, simulation will end after three hours or 180 minutes okay i am wondering if this this means that uh, together until three hours of course not i don't have time and of course you also okay uh, the, now we're here in heises or in dynamic simulation you can run the case in uh, real time 
or with acceleration and by default it's with acceleration you can see if if you click here run real time so this case will run for three men three hours in real time okay but if you uh, if you uh, keep it empty like this so it will be accelerated that means that maybe three hours will actually uh, three uh, three simulation hours will actually uh, uh, only consume maybe one minute or ten minutes depending on the acceleration okay so here he's saying okay make it the acceleration of 0.5 increasing or decreasing the acceleration means that that will accelerate the time so 0.5 mean instead of one means that I I uh, I slow down the integration or the, uh, the 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 acceleration time okay even if it's uh, above zero by 0.01 uh, it will be uh, there will be an acceleration okay so now 0.5 means that the acceleration uh, will take place okay it has a relationship between the end time the the actual time and or the real time and the simulation time it uh, this uh, value affects the uh, actual time so now i'm saying this simulation the next simulation will last for uh, si three simulation hours but in uh, in reality it will maybe only uh, consume one minute or less okay increasing the acceleration will uh, decrease the, the the consumed time in reality okay so I am ready now to see the time Let's take to fill the tank from 0 to 50 percent first I I'll save okay make sure that you save the example okay anywhere and from the dynamics please make sure in the dynamic assistant that uh, checkbox on the safe state, state case is checked in order to take a backup from the safe state, state case before uh, converting it to dynamics okay and now we are ready click on the dynamics mode you see because it's uh, only one way you cannot get back to the state state after converting to dynamics so now it's taking your confirmation are you sure you want to switch to dynamics yes I'm sure I already have a backup okay nothing happened because still last thing missing is to click on run okay now it's like if you have a audio or video you can click on run and you can see what will happen okay it will take 180 minutes now 180 minutes finished you can see here 175 180 and the integrator stopped because i i i told him to stop after 180 minutes so now it stopped what happened during the last three hours what happened you see one three hours it, it runs in reality with maybe 10 seconds okay or less if you need to, it to be slower so you can make it uh, maybe the acceleration 0 0.1 0.05 you can decrease the acceleration so okay in this trend i can go back by just dragging the curve i am dragging the curve i'm dragging i need to 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 see what the time that uh, the tank uh, took to fill uh, to be filled with 50% you can see you can see this is the time this is the actual time make it uh, more bold so i can from legend
¿Qué? Okay. So I am only dragging the curve. Okay. So this interception bottom, you know, the green line, the green curve point, which is 50%. So the, the, the simulation started at zero time, zero minutes. The liquid percent was zero. And the set point was 50 because the set point will not change because I, I fixed it with 50%. So what happened? The, at the beginning, you see now, the liquid in uh, the level uh, uh, indicator controller, LIC, the opening changed because at the beginning it was 50%. So I need to hold up uh, some liquid or to accumulate some liquid inside the tank. So the, the, uh, the action continuously changed the, uh, the controller continuously changed the, uh, the valve opening until it reaches 6% only, from 50% to 6% to 6%. In order to accumulate the liquid inside the, the, the tank and fill it from 0 to uh, 50%, to fill a 3 meter uh, cube tank to its half. So I need to uh, only uh, maybe fill 1.5 meter cube Okay, of the tank, it will take how long? So from the strip chart, I can see which which value. This one, this one, it's it's the the, the actual time. Now it's full with fifty percent. This intersection. Okay, so the the level increases, increases, increases uh, until it reaches here fifty. So at this fifty, it was maybe at <clears throat> thirty six or thirty seven minutes. After thirty seven minutes. It's now uh, half, uh, uh, the half volume is filled with liquid, okay? And the rest, it's, uh, it's the controller time to stabilize. Now, it may be stabilized at 75 uh, minutes. After 75 minutes, it's now the set point uh, reaches a stable point. And now it's a steady state and... Uh, reaches the set point of 50% without any oscillation or variation. So, during this session, we learned how to uh, uh, install a controllers and how to deal with dynamics. All, uh, all, all uh, what I did in dynamics is just to run dynamics mode and click start because I already prepared everything in the C state. Whatever happened in the dynamics, I can return it back to the C state case file open and see and start again and fix the problem in the C state and again come here again. It's it's if it's about oper operational problem I can fix it from the dynamic. But if if it's about data problem if I entered uh, a data by wrong in the C state if for example if I if I entered the uh, action reverse uh, instead of direct or vice versa so. I have to go back to the state case and change it and run the dynamics again and see the effect of the uh, controller. So now the set point reached 50%. Now you can see that now the uh, the BV uh, is now identical with the set point. Uh, and the valve opening is 6%. Six, six if I did reset, it will only reset the time. It will not reset the values so if i if i click on reset it will recount 180 minutes again but the current values will remain you can see reset here the current values are still and if you run it will just add extra 180 minutes okay so it, it runs for 180 minutes, but now in this case, it starts from the beginning, okay? So again. So that's all for today. Uh, hope you enjoyed this session and uh, have a, a true value for uh, simulation. And, you, you, and it was valuable for you, I hope. Maybe it's for 
some of you it's uh, just wasting uh, his time but I'm sure that part of you uh, already get benefit from this uh, session uh, maybe uh, if you have any questions you already uh, should uh, post it uh, in the uh, on the event wall uh, send it to me by email or you can uh, I'll, I'll review all the uh, question that you you posted here in the uh, in a meeting session and uh, hope to see you soon and uh, uh, I'm, I'm not doing marketing but if you need a full course I have to d dedicate more time for you so I think uh, we should do it with professional way uh, so uh, uh, I'll, I'll try to make uh, more uh, sessions on uh, the YouTube but uh, till now, uh, that's it uh, about the dynamics, you know, the basics right now. And uh, I'll, I'll share with you a lot of documents that can help you to uh, be fully independent on, on me and you can continue uh, your uh, full course and uh, learn how to uh, uh, simulate more complex uh, units. But you have the basics right now and you can continue from this uh, session, okay? Thank you very much, and I'll share all the documents with you, uh, maybe today, uh, now, uh, maybe at uh, night or tomorrow, okay? Thank you. Bye. If you have any comments or any feedback, you are welcome to send it to me uh, via message or uh, on my Facebook uh, account, okay? I'll uh, end the meeting now and redirect you to the uh, page, event page, that you can post your uh, questions, okay?